good? Yeah. yeah, I think All so. Right. All right, so obviously you see my name on here. It's Plug North. Today is the 13th. Um, what we're going to be talking about NF tables is, as some of you kind of exclaimed when you came in here, like from eating all that pizza, it's, uh, <laughs> they should probably dump the net filter from the NF, call it newfangled, but I don't know. I put, I, I put the IP in parentheses because it's like, even though it still, it still uses like most of the net filter, you know, infrastructure, like all, like all the back end and the kernel, all that stuff, um, there's, there's kind of like a, kind of one structural difference that you can't, besides the syntax, which I'll go over later, um, you know, yeah, like besides syntax, there's actually, you know, even on like the kernel side, there's actually some difference there. And obviously we're going to go over that. So, actually hit the button. So, who wants to, who wants to figure out what this is? I, I, I actually took this off of uh, Patrick McCarty, that, that's the guy who, uh, who actually came up with NF tables um, in the first place, like way back in like 2009, 2010, something like that. He did a, he did a talk, like I think earlier to, earlier this year, about like him architecting NF tables and like actually kind of just kind of even doing like a more detailed version of this talk even. And this was actually his title slide of, of him <laughs> actually of, of him actually just putting a really ugly you know IP tables like example there, and like you see like. It's, it's a. I put this. I, I put this on lo, on the lowercase huge size of LaTeX, and um, I try I, I try to put it on the on, on the uppercase one, and it, it just looked even worse. So lowercase huge size and just this example IP tables, and for those who actually use IP tables, this looks pretty looks pretty normal. Uh, like, you know, you have like you're specifying your input, you know, you want. TC, you're trying to you're operating on TCP packets, port eight, destination port eighty, and then you gotta load like the state modules and some hash limit modules. It's just 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 just, just a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> so there we go. So yeah, why why do we have an NF tables? You know, you know when when they first started developing in two thousand nine, and then it finally got mainlined and in 3.13, i.e. the motivation for why they even decided to develop this. From both the maintainer, like a, like the like the, the net filter maintainers, the you know the, the the other people in the kernel project who have to deal with that crap, and even from a user's point of view. So yes, IP tables is old. <laughs> like dates way back into the 2.4 series if anyone remembers the 2.4 kernel. <laughs> so IP tables was, was a new thing back in 2.4 um, and back then back then like IPv6 wasn't really wasn't really all that prevalent um, there were some other some other network items that were not very prevalent at the time and now they, now they exist like IPv6 is we, we have dual stack IPv6 on some networks like Comcast and we have we have probably more more uh, more complicated NAT rules, NAT filtering, all that good stuff. So it, so yeah, it, it was it was designed in kind of in kind of a different era when things were a little bit simpler. And now since we have we have so like networks have diversified over the years, and now it's just become just really really cumbersome. Like not only not only for the maintainers who actually have who. Um, who are actually duplicating code between you know IP tables, you have IP6 tables, you have ARP tables, and you have um, what's the other one? I forget <laughs> the the fourth one. Um, so there's so it's because because the IP tables design was more like was very protocol specific, very packet specific. Um, it ended up being end up being a lot of code duplication. Um, it just became it just became a headache for the net builder people to maintain, and obviously in the previous slide you have all these modules that you have to load if you want to use them, and and that's for like it's that's probably for like every single rule you want to use, right? So, I mean I, I don't I, I personally don't really use uh, IP tables because like I, I took I took like a first look at it and I just and like at the time NF tables actually 
was in a usable state, so I was like, all right, screw IP tables. I'm using NF, NF tables like straight on. <laughs> um, so, so that that that's really the probably the biggest reason why um, the net filter people decided to kind of kind of go sideways on the NF tables, and hopefully, NF or IP tables will be removed. And NF tables will be the only thing that exists because that'll that'll be happening sometime in the future. Um, but some of the like some of the stuff that that the net filter people wanted to have in in a firewall um, was was like they don't they wanted to get rid of like the like the, the unnecessary specificity. And so they really they actually designed NF tables to have like when it when it's evaluating packets when it's classifying packets it does it in like a very like a rather generic way, because when you really like when you really go down to like the like the lowest levels, it's really just binary. It's just like it's just data, and they were they kind of wanted to go down into, into like that lower level so they don't have to they don't have to like really duplicate all that code um, unnecessarily. And along with that, they can introduce data structures like sets and maps, which we'll go over a little bit later. Um, and also take advantage of, or, or really take into account, the growing number of dual stack networks out there, like Comcast with their dual stack, dual stack IPv4, IPv6. Before with IP tables, like you, had, you had to have one set of rules for IPv4, and then another set of rules for IPv6, and there, were, and there really wasn't any way to like, to like synchronize the rules like in, like by default or really in like a, like an obvious way, unless you wrote some scripts to do so. So that's, and then NF tables also provides a Netlink API. Um, probably, like I think, I think with IP tables, like if you wanted, if if you're using something like fail to ban or firewall D or any or anything above the IP tables layer, you would actually, it would still be called the IP tables, um, the IP tables like user space program. So now, but now with the NF tables. Netlink API, you can actually, there's actually there's actually like a, like a C library or something like that, or you can actually just call it directly. You don't have to you don't have to like type in IP tables or NF or IP six tables or EV tables or ARP tables for each like for each rule change or or like rule addition, rule removal, things like that. And then you also get a real syntax language. If if any of you have ever used any of the other Unix firewalls like PF on OpenBSD or FreeBSD, like that's actually, that's actually like kind of, like if you actually look at the, compare the syntax between PF and NF tables, they're actually kind of similar. Like in, in certain ways they're kind of similar, but obviously they are, they are different. So, so yeah, main differences with IP tables is, I pretty much just took this, took this list off the NF tables wiki, um, but so yeah, obviously you have you have a different yeah actually have a syntax language instead of just typing in IP tables IP tables IP six tables like for for all the rules all that stuff you can you can use like you can either pass in rules or rules via the NFT um, user space utility or you can actually write it all in a file with like with like structure kind of like kind of like a Perl script or a Python script or, or really any shell script something like that. Um, they they describe the syntax as inspired by TCP dump. I'm not really, I, I haven't really looked into that claim all too much, but I get if if they say so, I guess. Um, so fully configurable tables and chains. So with IP tables, you kind of have you kind of have like a like an all or nothing situation. Like if you're like if you don't really load IP tables, like you don't you don't get any of the tables, you don't get any of the chains, but the soon, like as soon as you decide to use IP tables, it bombards you with all with everything. Like yeah, like it, it by default, it'll get, like it'll give you you know the input input table, the output output table or chain or something like that. And and it's like you kind of have to configure all of them or else IP tables will, will scream at you. Whereas with NF tables, it doesn't give you anything by default. You decide what you want to load, um, or you decide what you want to you know write. Write rules for, write tables for, write chains for. Um, 
and we'll, 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 we'll go over that a little bit like once we get into the into the demo portion there's not really that many slides here because while we have like on like USP this actually has a usable uh, usable network and I think I wrote my my network IP address some like on the board there once we get once we get to that stage you know just to test out things like you know rate limiting all that stuff um, so for rule evaluations it's like for each for each like line it's uh, it's so far so far according to them it's going to be a linear evaluation of expressions so it will it'll go from left to right so you can have like for example you can you can specify you can specify like a like a source IP or a source interface and and like that will and that will be like probably your first statement on the left and then you can and then you can put like you can put like a counter expression to to count all the to count all the bytes and the packets all that stuff and then you could probably just leave it there and they'll just it will just count however many packets of bytes you got or you could or you could just go further you could type in a, you could put a log expression and that will log log everything into your into your kernel log like all like like all, all the packets that go through with uh, information on like source IP you know source uh, interface all that good stuff and then you can and then like there are certain statements like drop accept that are what's called terminate expressions where you can't do anything anymore you're not supposed to put anything after them because they're because once they're dropped or rejected or accepted it's done right so linear linear evaluation of expressions for now um, so like I actually kind of described you can put you can put several item or actions in one rule one like one rule being like being one line so like I said before you can have you can have the counter which counts counts all the all the packets and bytes and all that stuff and then but like on the same rule you could have a log you can log them all like log all the packets and then you can and then like at the end you can do like an accept reject drop that, that kind of thing so several actions you can do in, in one line um, on like in IP tables um, counters and I, apparently in IP tables like counters are apparently like every every single rule has a counter in NF tables you can they are optional so if you like you only get the counter if you actually specify counter for that rule uh, um, dynamic updates you, it's a lot easier in NF tables to actually add and remove and modify rules um, NF, NFT, the user space utility, like if you pass in a certain command line flag, it'll um, it'll actually give you what's called handles. Like so, handles are like are kind of like IDs that the kernel actually assigns each rule. So, um, for example, when you're when you're when you want to delete a rule, um, you want to so far so far like they, they haven't implemented like more when you can actually just dynamically like select rules based on based on expressions. But so far. If you want to delete a rule, you would just get um, you would get a list of the handles that the kernel assigns to each rule, and then and then you would just use the NFT user space utility to uh, pass in that handle and then delete the rule. So you can so a lot easier to, a lot easier to delete. You can add rules on the fly. It will just be like after whatever rule it is, or you can actually specify it after which handle or before which handle. Um, Dual stack, dual stack administration. Um, unlike IP tables and IP6 tables, where they're separate, even though NF, NF tables had like like you can separate them with with the IP table and the IP6 table and NF table as well. But NF tables also gives you a INET table, and that's for and that's for actually administrating the dual stack, like the like dual stack filtering, dual stack whatevers. So. So if you if you put in like if you put in some input filter in the INET table, it'll it'll take care of it for both IPv4 and IPv6. So, and then set map data structures. Um, that's when that's when if you want if you want to have like let's say let's say like fail to ban has an NF tables implementation, it can 
it can actually create a set of the of IPs, for example, that failed to ban is detected that that's uh, that's worthy of banning, and it can create a set of all those IPs, put them in that in that set data structure, and then the rest of the the rest of the rule set can just reference that set, or that set can be in line with with a specific rule, and it can be it, it can be really any any sort of data structure or a, a, yeah any type of data in that set. You can have IP addresses. You can have, you can even have like, like expressions in there. It, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter as long as you use them properly. And then the same thing with same thing with maps. You can you can map like IP ranges, uh, like very specific IP ranges, not just CIDR notation, but like, but if you're if you're trying to do like ten point zero point like one to ten point zero point like 12 or something like that, you can do that. You can do that with the map. Um, you can even map um, IPs, IPs to like, to expressions. So you could have, you could have like, you know, like one like 192 something, 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 you can map that to drop. Like anything that comes from that IP address like automatically drops. So that's, that's an example of a map there. Um, concatenations, that's, I didn't. I didn't really look too far into the concatenation thing, but it's kind of it's kind of similar to having like the the several actions in one rule. Um, so there's that, and then updates without actually updating the kernel. It's really driven by the NFT and the lib and, and the library. So it, as long as you update the as long as you update the user space stuff, you can get the new protocols. Um, as they as they are developed, unlike with IP tables where you actually had to update the kernel for each for each like new protocol that or module that IP tables supported. So so based so pretty much a lot like some some more user space involvement and a little a little bit a little bit like lighter load on the kernel because you don't have to reboot as much. But yeah. So yeah, availability. Um, uh, like what? Like I think the first few times I've ever mentioned IP tables to people, like they were like, "Well, is it is it available in my kernel?" Or like, or, or they were they were just confused as to like if it was available, or they were afraid it wasn't available in the kernel. Turns out, so mainline three point thirteen, um, I've used it. I've used the the main like the the native you know, mainline version for on my on my machines forever. Um, they run Arch. <laughs> Um, but I think a couple days ago, a couple days ago before the big CentOS update came out, um, I've apparently apparently CentOS backported NF tables to three point to their three point ten kernel that they've been using like for for a CentOS seven. So it's very possible that your that if you're using like some enterprise Linux distro or like your distro is like stuck on some old some really ancient kernel or something like that because they didn't want their they didn't want their ABI to break. It's very possible that they backported it, that they backported that table along with probably some other stuff that only appeared on later kernels. It's very possible that they backported like probably it's possible that Debian backported it too. Obviously Red Hat because Cento is based off Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, so what else? So yes, the so, there, so that's the kernel. That's like the kernel half of things, um, and then really the and then like really the rest of it is is actually in the user space. So you have you have the NFT the NFT um, program. It's it's only one it's only one program compared to like at least four for IP tables, and it's and that and that's where you can add, you can modify, you can remove, you can flush, like you, you basically do every. This is like the one the one. Um, the one like user facing like component besides the two libraries, two NF tables. And and that's and then I'll, and then you have uh, libmnl, that's the netlink API, and then you have lib nf nftnl, that's the NF tables API. So that's for that's for when one like you know firewall D or shorewall or UFW or or fail to ban or whatever whatever other programs that decide to Screw with your firewall, um, probably to make your life easier. Um, if like in, instead of instead of 
those programs calling the IP tables utility, they can actually just make direct API calls via lib nftnl. So, and so when you're actually when you're actually going about this in your package manager, it's usually either either like it's all included in one NF, one big NF tables package, or in the case of let's say like Arch Linux, it's probably split into like three packages where you have where you have NF tables that includes the NFT program and some example like some example configurations, and then the other two packages are lib mnl and lib nftnl. So. Consult your package manager for how they decide to package it. I think I think CentOS has a package in just two packages. One one's obviously just the NFT utility and the and the configure and the sample configurations, and then like I think the other one is just all the libraries. So, so yeah, definitely consult your consult your package manager for how they decide to package everything up. Anybody have any any questions so far? Was there a lot of kernel changes, or is it mostly user space changes? It's mostly so. Yeah, it's it's definitely mostly user space. Like like there 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 are like there, there's a little bit like it still uses most of the existing NetFilter architecture, and they and then they just added they just added like they just added like a like a different like processing like you know processing part to it. But and but that but that's really about it. Like it's just it's just like a small processing bit on the kernel side, but it's mostly user space, mostly user space thing. Um, like I think uh, like I think on the kernel side, it's they put a they put like a JVM kind of thing, like like kind of a kind of virtual machine, really a bytecode interpreter, where when you when you actually put in rules, when you actually put in rules, that it, it the um, the user space stuff actually converts it into kernel objects. Or, or in the bytecode, um, where the where the little uh, virtual machine actually actually parses everything and actually does all the packet stuff, and then and, and then that just interacts with the rest of the existing NetFilter stack, and then from there, once they decide that they're going to deprecate in it or deprecate IP tables, they just get rid of like all the all the bulk that was IP tables, and then and then just leave it with the existing NetFilter stuff. And then the little and then the little virtual machine that NF tables operates on. So, so yeah, mostly mostly user space. And that's where and, and, and that's where that's where like that's where that you don't have, you don't really have to necessarily update the kernel every time like a new protocol comes out. So anything any other questions before we before we go into the before we go into the little demo portion? Is there anything that uh, IP tables can't do yet that IP tables can do? It's pretty. It, it's pretty feature complete at this point. It's most. I, I. I think when I when I was like looking at like some some of the some of the other details, it's mostly just it's mostly just like order like order of operations and like so and, and like certain like certain ways of like you know deleting. Deleting rules like they haven't exactly implemented yet, and obviously like the nonlinear, the nonlinear expression evaluation they haven't implemented yet. But like, but like feature-wise and like of of like evaluate of like processing packets and um, and like rules and all that stuff. Like that's it's pretty much feature complete. Like 3.13 was like 3.13 you you probably shouldn't use because they because it, like almost nothing was implemented yet. Uh, but like. They said, I think I, I think the maintainer said like 3.18 was like was when it really became like usable. So so yeah, it, it's pretty it's pretty much feature complete between like between what IP tables can do and what NF tables can do at this point. It's just it's just some some really trivial stuff that like that that's like you know kind of on like a future roadmap of sorts. So, that's pretty much. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, demo time. All right. Well, I'm gonna do for this one. All right. So first of all, so first of all, like, so when when you're using the NFT, um, when you're using the NFT utility here, you have to you have to you, it has to be in root. 
So obviously, since I'm not in the room right now, but I, I'm in the wheel room, I'm just going to do some pseudoing here. First of all, I'm going to, I'm going to flush all the rules that I've got right now because there are some, there are some IP addresses that probably shouldn't be on video. Um, <laughs> So that so that will flush, that will flush the entire rule set, and obviously, and then like, so if we actually list the rule set, there's nothing there. So, so first, like, so obviously, we have we have no rules, we have no tables, we have no chains. Um, so, what we want to do, what we want to do here, is is actually define some define some tables. Now, the the um, the NF tables package usually includes some some like sample some sample um, some sample configurations. Um, they're they're devoid of rules uh, because that's up to you to decide. But they do have they do have like some some recommended recommended like table configurations and chain configurations. So we can actually list them. I can. Uh, there we go. So. So, see, you, see, you have you have a bridge. You have a sample bridge filter file. You have a sample inet filter. You know, yeah, and then you have like sample IPv4 filter, mangle, that, all that stuff. So let's take a look at let's take a look at say the inet filter structure. So. So first. We have so first it, so first it defines a table because that's really that, that's really where where everything starts. So the tape so starts off with a table and then you need to specify a a protocol family. So if you don't specify a protocol family, by default it it defaults to IPv4 and 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 that's just represented by table IP and then and so and so after after the protocol family. You, you give it you give the table a name. In this case, it's filter. So um, I could I could just do I could just include the file like this with the with the dash f um, with the dash f flag here. I could just include the file and it'll just and, and then and then like once we list the rule set. It's there, so I want to flush this again because you can because you can actually do that. You can do you can do the whole you know adding the tables and the chains yourself. You, you, like you, you don't you don't necessarily have to rely on like a on like starting off with a sample you know configuration file to start off. You can you can do everything yourself like um, like adding tables. So you can do you can do an NFT. You know, add table, and then since we're since we're going to do the dual stack inet, we're going to specify inet, and then filter, and then that should just that lists the that lists the table. There's nothing there because we didn't we didn't specify any chains. All right. So now, so now what we do is to we, we need to add a chain before we can add any rules. All right. What's the rule set again? We have an empty chain. And and then like and then when you're actually listing when you're listing rules, you can actually list by table and you can list by chain. For example. Since we only have one table, it's just going to list that one table, right? You know, let's, for example, for the next, for like listing by chain, let's let's just add like another, let's just add another empty chain, just to make just to make the example a little bit clearer, right? So let's 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 call this chain output, right? So we have two chains. Right? Now we can now we can list. List an individual chain. Let's just list input, for example. All right. All right. And 
so it, and so when you're when you're actually listing when you're listing like each each level down, it will include it will include like all like all the declarations for for it above. So if we have so like obviously like if you if you just list the rule set or just list the entire table, you get both chains. But if you only list one chain, it'll it'll give you the it'll give you the upper level table, but it won't give you any of the other chains because you didn't pick the other chains, right? So so yeah, so now we have one so now we have a table and we have two empty chains. So so obviously the the input chain is is for inbound traffic that you want to that you want to analyze it or block or reject or whatever. And then output chain and that's for that's for the output traffic. Right? So you guys uh, you guys follow along so far? Alright. So let's uh, let's add let's just add like a just add just add a sample rule just for probably probably since since I have since I actually just fired up a a um, an Apache instance, you can probably you can probably just like if you type in that if you type in that IP on the left in your in your browser, you should get you should get like an empty directory like your typical like Apache directory listing. That's just empty because I, I don't have anything on there. If uh, if if the network will let you do it, <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. So, let's add. Let let just add like just 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 one rule. Just run one rule in this input chain because because that's what that's what you guys typing in that IP address to get to my Apache instance. That that's that's what the traffic will be. It'll, it'll, just, it'll be inbound traffic to my machine here. So, what if what if I suddenly decide that like, what if you know somebody somebody else who took my machine um, could be could be some really mean IT person um, or or somebody who just wanted to prank me uh, decided that um, they decided that they they, they want to screw with everybody else and not not let anybody um, load any web pages. Right, they want, but they don't know how to shut Apache off, but they do know how to mess with the firewall. So, so it's like, what if, what if we block all inbound port 80 traffic, right? So, what they can do, they can add a rule. We actually have that at work right now, where we have uh, some agents behind a load balancer, and the load balancer, for various reasons, isn't real smart but it can see if the agent is there. And so we're doing logic to go to the agent and say, set your IP tables rules so that the load balancer can't see you when you're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it sucks, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> we'll improve it yeah. as, as we have time. But it, yeah. <clears throat> and so, and so if, if, they, if, if that was using, if that was using NF tables, they actually, they can just, they can actually use the, use the API directly instead of just calling NFT like or IP tables like repeatedly, so so yeah. So back yeah. to back to just like manually configuring like on, on our side um, to block. Let's say we'll, let's say we, we want to block all the port eighty stuff, right? So we want to we want to add a rule to the i to the inet or the filter chain that on the inet protocol family, or and then and on the input chain. So so we want to add the rule into Net filter input and then deport eighty. Um, drop might be a little bit boring, so um, oh we can. So before before I type in a a terminating expression, which is either drop or reject or accept or something like that, we can we can we, we can log and that'll and, and like. That will basically just spam the uh, the kernel logs, but that's fine. <laughs> um, we can have like for, so for the log for the log expression, you can even you can even give it a prefix for um, in the kernel for for the kernel logs to make it a little bit more readable. For example, like for example on my on my little home server, um, I get a lot of I get a lot of attempted SSH connections. Um, they all fail because because I because I only have key based authentication, so they all fail. But it's still fun to it's still fun to see like all the 
all the SSH connections come, like all, all the attempted SSH connections come in. So, I, and I want to differentiate them from all the other all the other attempted connections. Um, so, what you can do is actually just type in. You can have a little prefix expression, and that's and that has to come after the log. So, let's call this uh, blocked HTTP. Want to make sure you get that space in there because because it, it, it takes that string literal. It it takes a string literal into the into the kernel log. So block HTTP and then and then let's do a reject. Let's do let's do a reject with and then let me look up. There's a there's like a list of there's like a list of like rejections that you could that you can um, that you can have. That'll load. There's like. Rejecting traffic. So yeah, you can have you can have like administrative pro prohibited. You can have port unreachable. Uh, no route to host. Host unreachable. You can probably do that in IP tables, but I'm just showing you here in NF tables here. So like, you can do a reject. You can do a reject. So um, when you're specifying your reject uh, reasons, it has to match. It has to match the protocol family that you've got. So, for example, so in this inet, in this inet protocol family table, you have to reject it with with some ICMPX um, reason. So, reject with ICMPX, and for this demo, let's call it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do an admin program. All right. So, so this so ICMPX is is the is the dual stack. Is the dual stack um, ICMP rejection uh, reasons? If you're if you're doing this on on just not on like a plain IPv4 table, or th that would be represented as like table IP and then like table name. If you were to do that there, you would need to you, it, it, instead of being reject with ICMPX, it would just be reject with ICMP. And then if you're just doing it in like in a in a pure IPv6 table, it would be reject with ICMPv6. Um, it's actually ICMPX. You have to put a type in there. Right. Sudo obviously, obviously expired. Oops. Okay. I screwed up there. It's like that. It's like that one. That one, uh, one thing I typo. Right. Oh yes, I, I forgot to forgot to do the TCP or UDP or something like that. All right. All right. Probably it's probably have to I have to like do some like do like you know prior like this stuff here so I'll, I'll flush this. Oh yeah, it looks like you. I mean, from your earlier example, like you have to hook it. I think. Yeah, yeah. So let me just flush it. I'll just uh, I just reload it. TCP dump run and oh okay and so I see the ICMP response which says oh, okay. unreachable admin prohibited filter. Oh, okay. But yeah. yeah, your browser will just be like, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta reject. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
Yeah. So you, so yeah, you, you pretty much have to make sure you when, when you're when you're doing when you're doing like the, your chains, uh, you gotta make sure you gotta make sure you specify your your hooks and hooks and your default policy. So you see you see on on the end you, there, there's a default policy of accept. You can change that to either. So the 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 two valid options of default policies are accept and drop. So if you did so like if I were to if I were to do like policy drop, um, and I didn't specify any other rules, every single every single packet for that change would be dropped. Whereas um, whereas with accept, obviously every every packet in that change would accept. Um, what you can also do, so let me so so let's look at the. See, see the rule. So, right, so the rule, the rule of blocking all the all the uh, port eighty traffic. Or, oh yeah. Also, if you by by default, it will change the port number into the into the service name. So in this case, like when I when I typed in, you know, TCP D port eighty. When we actually look at when we actually look at it from the from the NFT uh, list rule set or list table or list chain, it'll actually give you the it will give you the service name instead of the port number. You can disable that with another flag, but that's, that's just semantics at that point. So the two flags I passed in here, the, the dash and the dash a, that will give you the that will give you the handles of the kernel assigned to each rule. So now, if we want, if we want to delete this rule without flushing the entire rule set or, or flushing the chain or flushing the table, what you can do is is, is actually specify. You can when you delete the rule here. NFT. Is it delete or read? It's delete. Okay. Delete rule. So, find that filter. Input. Yeah, you, you, you have to specify your. Make sure you specify your table, your chain, and then, and then you can specify or handle. So in this case for in this case this is handle four. So if we list the rule set again, it's not there anymore. And if you and if you try to refresh your refresh your browser or your TCP dump or whatever, you should be able to get it. Right. So another 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 like example here. Um, So, yes. Um, so, so, so obviously another another feature of just pretty much any any reputable firewall is doing network address translation. And uh, I don't I don't I don't think I can really I don't think I can really show show the effects of NAT here. But pretty much I I can show you that I can show you what the Show you what the little, what what like a, pretty much like your base configuration should at least have to get NAT working, right? So it's pretty much just a, so so in this case in this case you can't they, they don't they don't have a, a dual stack NAT NAT thing. So 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 for NAT you have to so it has to be a separate IPv4 and I, IPv6 NAT, right? Um, so first. So, so first, you, you need you gotta set up your NAT table um, in either in either um, protocol family, 
and then and then you have your two chains. You have your pre-routing, you have your post-routing chain. And then and then like for, for let's say if you're if you're doing like source net. So for so let's say like well back when I back when I was still using VMware, um, I pretty this was pretty much how I even got NAT to work with NF tables because the VMware by default still is still on IP tables of all things. Um, so for source NAT you would add a rule into the post routing chain. Um, in this case, in fact I'll I'll like, I'll like type it out, but I won't I won't like actually put it in put the rule in. So so you want so you can add you add a rule to Post routing. That's for that's for the source net. And then you want to specify your you want to specify your your source address or your source um, interface. So the the example on the wiki has a has a source address, but in but for here um, or back when I used VMware, I didn't have to do that. I can just specify like in like a source interface. So so that would be with IIF, and then I think the source interface was either it was either the it was either the Ethernet or the Wi-Fi, one of the two, depending on where it was, uh, what what the network configuration was. But that's so that's where that's where your your source network what what your host network is, right? And then VMware has like VMware creates like two or three two or three of its own like network interfaces for its own use. So, so for that we want to we want to translate the host network traffic to to the VMware uh, network interface, right? So we have an output interface, and then I think it was like VM VMnet eight or something like that, or VMnet one or something like that. So you can you can be you, you can be a little bit more granular with this by specifying a by specifying like a source. Um, oh wait, no, I got the backwards. So input was VM. Oh yeah, input was VM. VM net eight, and then output was the host. So all right. So yes. So yeah, we we want, we want to pipe that into the VMware network, and then from the host network, which in this case would be Wi-Fi, and then we and then we can go we can go a little bit more granular with this. Just like for if if you have like if your host has like multiple IP addresses on one interface, one one like multiple like IPv4 addresses in this case, you can be a little bit more granular, so that like so that it won't pick like it won't randomly pick like an IP address that doesn't actually have outbound or greater internet connectivity here. So you so you can be you can be more granular by specifying a IP address like I don't know some one nine two something like that. I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna hit I'm not gonna hit enter on this because I didn't I didn't actually load the I didn't load any NAT tables or anything like that. But that's what that's what like a source NAT would look like, All right? And that and, and that's pretty much that's pretty much how what I used when I still had VMware. To get the net working, and then masquerading, you just add like another. You pretty much just add another rule that's like also in the post routing chain. Right, masquerade. That's pretty much it. And that's and that and you can also do. You can also do destination NAT and redirects and all that good stuff. You can specify flags and yeah. um, so let's do let's do sets here. Let's do like a do like an example of a set. So all right. Yeah, I had a case like that one time where I was trying to do. Firewall rules from a, from a um, a training room actually like this to somewhere else, but it was 
non-contiguous IP addresses and like 20 non-contiguous ports. And they had bought a PIX firewall, and this is like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, and it couldn't do sets or anything. So I wrote the Perl script to generate the firewall code, and I forget how many thousands of lines it was. I'm like, all right, if we <laughs> implement this, it immediately becomes unmaintainable. Yeah. Let's not do that. <laughs> and I made him take the picks back and uh, got something else. I don't remember what it was, but it's it's amazing that it hasn't had stuff like this at, at like this level for that long. Maps and all that stuff. So yeah, I mean, so you know, if you can do a demo of you know oh, yeah. one or two IP addresses and one or two ports well, or something like that, like how do you the, how do you do that? So <clears throat> the example the example that I have right that, that I'm about to actually type in right now is actually like a set of ports. Like like a set okay, of uh, discrete ports, um, you can you you can do you can do a set of discrete IP addresses. In fact, actually, on my home server, of my of, of like a manual of, of me doing fail demand manually, um, I actually have another I have like another chain that's just called band, and, and it's just based it's it's basically just one rule that has that has like a set of IP addresses, and then the terminating the, the terminating expression was like. Was like reject with admin prohibited or something like that. So so you can do, you, you can like and speaking of which you can you can jump from a different chain. You you can specify a jump to a, to another chain, and then like it will evaluate that that other chain if it matches. If it doesn't match, it just jumps back to the original one. All right. All right. So um so for sets sets. So let's say let's say we want to. Let's say we want to do another block, all right? So, so back here, we can we can actually modify. So we have we're, we're about to add this we're about to add back this uh, um, this port eighty block. However, we can put this into a set. Not only not only just port eighty, but some idiot forgot to also block the SSL version, the the HTTPS. So we can put we can put four four three into this set, and then I don't know I don't know uh, what if this machine what if this this machine had, like un unknowingly to the original owner or original operator had a Gopher server running on it too. Let's block port seventy as well. <laughs> All right. Oh, and apparently this guy also found out there was an there there was an email. There was an email relay going on as well. Let's block port 25. <laughs> All right. So so now so now we have four ports. We have four ports in this uh, in, in the set here. And oops, parse error. I think we have to put a space or something. I think we have to put a space. Oh right, it's it's ZSH. Good old ZSH. Oh yeah, so in probably in like Bash or like some up or like most other shells, you wouldn't have to do this, but in because because I'm using ZSH, um, the brackets are sacred characters. <laughs> so we're going so we're going to have to we're going to have to put quotes in the brackets, and then so now ZSH won't mess with it. So so now the so now the rule is added. See and, and see now the see now the the services are expanded and if you try to if you try to refresh or refresh the web browser it's probably gonna get blocked again. Alright. Blocked? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so 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 yeah, that, so that's one example of that's one example of you know blocking by blocking by port. Um, you can also you can also block by, you can also block by IPs. You can, you can block by, you can actually specify. You can even specify express like whole expressions in there if you feel like it. Um, there's also, there's also dictionary, which I haven't really gotten around to using it on my own production yet. But that's like, dictionaries are just your, it's just, it's just, let's see. yeah. So yeah, yeah. So dictionaries are just like, you know, mapping. Uh, the like 
in, in this example, it's like it's it's doing a virtual map between like TCP to jumping to the jumping to the, like the TCP chain. If it's UDP, it will jump to the UDP chain. That's that's uh, specified in that rule set. Um, so there's and then and then one one feature that I also do that I also use that's like under a different name in IP tables. Um, Keith mentioned it before, but I use, I use the built-in uh, use the rate limiter. The rate limiter of, of NF tables, and that's like and you can you can rate by you can rate by number of packets. You can limit by number of number of bytes, megabytes, gigabytes, uh, bits, or something like that. You can do you can do like one packet per hour, one packet per minute. One packet every, every every like five seconds, something like that. So, so yeah, that's so yeah, that's like that's just like a just like kind of a taste of what NF tables can do. Um, definitely, definitely for like further reading, um, just go on go on the NF tables wiki. It's like wiki.nftables.org. Um, it's a, it's fairly complete documentation if you wanna if you wanna check that out. Um, it's like it was a, it was actually like expanded from like from like a five or ten minute introduction and at tables guide that like one of the maintainers wrote like wrote like off the side of his mouth. Um, but yeah that's, that's that's pretty much just like a taste of NF tables and its abilities and some some features that like you thought were firewalls that weren't there before and now they are. So that's pretty much it. Anybody have questions or yeah. Does it have a dummy proof command like uh, IP tables? I don't know if there's like a utility package you can get with it, but like when you save your tables and you say load it, it'll give like a timer if you disconnect yourself. Like uh, I just blocked myself on SSH and now like, I'm disconnected. Yeah, yeah, you yeah you can you can like you you can have like rules to like expire, and you can have rules to like delay like delay um, delay coming into effect. So but, so it won't revert it. Back to the previous state, is there something like that? I mean, like what? And by default, like once you like once you put a rule in, it's it's effective immediately. Mm -hmm. um, in order for it to not go into effect immediately, or for it to expire, you need to you need to put in you need to put that expression in somewhere there, somewhere somewhere on that line. So each, so like each line, remember each line is a rule. So you have to make sure you put the you have to put your expire expire expression or your Delay expression or something like that. Like you got to make sure it's in the rule somewhere. Yeah. How about the saving and restoring of rules? Does it look more like what what you're outputting there instead of? Uh... Yeah. So yeah. So if you if you want to save that to a file, pretty much pretty much all you have to do is just like do a list rule set and then and then you just in, okay. and then just redirect it to some file. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, then, and, and then like and then when you load the rule. And then when you load the rule, it's just it's just the dash f, and then you specify the path to that file. That's great. Yeah, yeah I, the uh, old IP tables with the different syntax between yeah. loading and, and the actual command line was awful. Yeah, and then and and, and even even more with the uh, with exporting rules, you can export them in XML and JSON as well. Um, the the ability to the ability to import them hasn't been implemented yet. To, to, imp to import rules that are in XML or JSON, that ability has not been implemented yet, but I think they're working on that. But you, but you can you can definitely export them in whatever in, in those three formats. In IP tables, instead of like uh, accept or reject, you could send it to another chain. Yeah. Can you do that? You, yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that here too, and and that's like and that, and that's pretty much what that's kind of what I mentioned with the jump with the jump uh, expression. What's the purpose of prior day minutes that was so like, all over the place? Yeah, yeah. So pri yeah. So prior priority is just um, I didn't I didn't really look into this as much either because I don't I don't really take advantage of it. But um, let's say like let's say like one um, so like I said before like by default by default um, NF tables does like does a linear evaluation so it's like so it's a, so it's a left to right, top to bottom kind of thing. Um, but with priorities, you can kind of you can kind of um, you can kind of mess around with like the top to bottom order a little bit. So if you had like 
if you had, let's say, if you had, if, if there was like one chain in this, in one specific table that was like block, block this traffic, but, but you had some exceptions to that, and then like, and then some other chain, some other chain would accept it, like would explicitly accept those exceptions. Um, what you would, what you would do is just, is just make that, make the exception chain a higher priority than the default block chain. That's, that's really what priority is. I didn't see any use of like uh, state statements like you would normally use in IP, with IP tables. Yeah, it's like... Do you still have that functionality, like stateful? Oh, yeah, it, it, yeah. Uh, logic? Yeah. Yeah, like I, I didn't, I, I didn't really, I didn't really go over it because it was because it was like a, we didn't really have that much time to do it in in, in like demo sense, but it's definitely there. It's just, I mean, just look on the, it's just all, it, it's all in the wiki pretty much. I, I didn't see you mention anything about the default default drop or default accept. Is that still something that you have to do, or is it's, it? It, it? It's it's all in that line where, where it's just like type filter hook whatever, and then like semicolon policy accept. So, so, so that's the so that would be like the, your default rule. That's like the dash capital P might be tables, something like that. So it's like so so like in, so like in these default in like these default uh, or not really default these example rule sets, um, the default policy is accept, but you can definitely like you can specify it to be policy draw. The, like those are those are your two default options, without like without like specifying a rule that's like that's like not very specific with. Um, with like interfaces or IPs or whatever or ports or, or like or like source ports, it would just be like a like you can either do like a, a default policy, um, accept or drop or something like that. But if you wanted to like default reject, you could also like be, because like because the only two options are accept and drop for your defaults, you could have like a catch-all rule that's like reject with ICMPX type like host unreachable or something like that. Um, if, if if you want to do like a reject, but for accept and accept and drop, you can if you can cover that in the on that first line where with policy accept or policy drop. Any more questions? Um, so persistence, like if say you want to save your um, firewall rules, um, is that pretty much the same as you would with um, IP tables? I mean, it's you, you basically you basically just like save it to like just redirect your redirect your list rule set output to a file, mm -hmm. and then most um, and then I think most NF tables packages will also come with like a with like a system deal or like some init script. Okay. And then and then you you just like enable the init script or like or run the init script, mm -hmm. and then and, and and the init script itself is it all like all it does is just is just load that file. Mm -hmm. That's all it does, okay. and then, yeah. and, and and that's how and that's how you can load it on startup, and if if you want to like flush it via the init script, you can do that as well because mm -hmm. the because the stop command is actually just flushing the whole, the entire rule set. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And, and and actually even more, um, because because NF tables are mostly kernel modules, um, as soon as you actually invoke NFT for the first time via either via the init script or. Uh, manually or via the API, it will automatically load the kernel module. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that makes sense. Any more questions? Is there any schedule to deprecate IP tables? Um, I don't. I, I haven't heard of any specific schedule to do so, but it, it's definitely it's definitely planned once it's like once um, so, sometime in the future, like. It, I, I don't I don't remember them saying any saying any any specific deprecation time frame, but it's definitely there because we because it's still it's still the net filter people maintaining both code bases and I and I feel like they would rather get rid of IP tables sooner than later um, so so just just keep an eye out for it because it's most likely what I have. Any more questions?